Welcome to our video tutorials for getting started with controllers from STW. In this video, we would like to introduce you to the starter kits from STW. STW provides starter kits for its controllers. The most important components are put together in a suitcase to be able to quickly experiment with a controller. In this video, we use the ESX3C starter kit as an example to show how quickly and easily you can put together an experimental setup with the components from the case and perform a functional test of the controller. The suitcase contains the ESX3C's controller, a breakout board, a cable to connect the controller and the breakout board, and cable for power supply. Not included is a device for the power supply. We have to provide this from our laboratory. In the case, you will also find a description of how to put the controller into operation. We'll go through these steps one by one in the video. First, we connect the controller to the breakout board using the short connecting cable. When doing so, we make sure to place the plug straight onto the socket and lock it with the bracket until we hear it click into place. Through this connection, all pins of the main connector of the controller are led to the breakout board. You can later connect cables to the connectors attached there and, for example, stimulate inputs of the controller or connect measuring devices to the outputs. But now we only want to determine if the controller works and how we will know. To do this, we need to connect the controller to the power supply via the breakout board. We connect the supplied power supply cable on one side to the matching connector on the breakout board. The other side of the cable has banana plugs. The individual cables are labeled. For proper power supply, we first connect the cables labeled G and D to the negative terminal of the power supply. We will connect the positive pole of the power supply with the cable, plus UE for the internal power supply of the controller, and plus UB for the direct power supply of the outputs of the controller at the main switch. Before we make this connection, we make sure that the voltage set on our power supply is in the range 8 to 32 volts for which the controller is designed. So for example, 14 volt. Now we make the connection of the two wires to the positive pole. We can see the proper connection with the power supply from the LEDs on the breakout board. The LED UE is on. But we can see from the LEDs of the controller that it has not started yet because both LEDs are off. In order to switch on the controller, the ignition signal is still missing. We could generate this signal by connecting the cable marked KL15 of the power supply connector to the positive pole of the power supply as well. But we don't do that because there is a switch on the breakout board which does exactly this function, i.e. to connect the positive pole of the power supply with the pin KL15 ignition. So we can switch the controller on and off at this switch, like in a car by means of an ignition key. So we switch on the ignition. The active ignition signal is also indicated with the LED on the breakout board. Our controller also goes into operation now, as we can see from the LEDs on the controller. The power on LED lights up green. All controllers from STW are equipped with the so-called template application when delivered. This application ensures the controlled startup of the controller and enables the communication of the controller with PCs or peripheral devices via the communication interfaces CAN or Ethernet. No inputs or outputs are operated by this application. However, this application contains a routine for controlling the second LED, the so-called user LED. This changes the color in different steps from red to green. 
we can recognize the proper operation of the application on the controller by this color change. So, from a hardware perspective, we have ensured the proper functioning of the controller from the starter kit. The controller can be turned on and off using the ignition switch, and we can confirm its proper operation through the LED configuration. In upcoming videos in this series, we will explore how to establish communication between a PC and the controller, and how to run example applications. I hope you find great success with your starter kits.